Amen. Turn with me to the book of Jeremiah. As we finish up part two from last Sunday. My God, I'm so excited. My God, as we get ready to be a blessing to you and release you to go enjoy your family. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 18, starting at verse 1. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And when everyone have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go down to the potter's shop. Uh, your translation may say the potter's house. And I will speak to you there. So Jeremiah said, I did as, the, as he told me and found the porter, potter working at his wheel. Verse 4 says, But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So he crushed it mm, 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 into a lump of clay again. And he started over. Then the Lord gave me this message. Oh, Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay. As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. So Father, we thank you. Speak to your people. We posture and position ourselves, Father God, for you to do business inside of our souls, Lord. We thank you that you love us enough, Father God. And now, Father God, we humble ourselves in your presence. We thank you for all that you represent to us, our devotion, our commitment, our priority is you. So, Father God, save somebody's soul. Yeah, yeah all these people, Father God, in here, our, ba our own line, Father God, if it's somebody that has not ever accepted you into their life, Father God, they don't know what salvation feel like or look like, Lord. Let this be the day. Salvation has shown up. Choose this day whom you shall serve and serve and serve and serve and serve and serve. And serve. And serve. We will continually serve you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I stated, started this series last week. This is very interesting because it's so personal to me because each and every one of you and I have to allow God to work. We understand that the potter in the natural represents the physical man, but in the heavenly realms, my God, the potter represents God. And so, my God, as I'm going to title this sermon and go ahead and move on because I don't want to labor the time, uh, the title again, my God, in part one is on the well page. You can go out to YouTube by subscribe to our YouTube page and you can see all of the things that God has been saying in the last six years up until present. But the title of the sermon is, my God, for those who was not here last week, let God put his hands on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let God put his hands on you. Mm -hmm. Let God put his hands on you as the potter had to put his hands on the clay. And as I told y'all last week, my God, God created your destiny first and then he created you for your destiny. As I taught y'all that last week, so my God, nothing catch God by surprise. My God, when we stumble along the way, when we make mistakes, when we decide to become stubborn and hard-headed, my God, just like the, 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 the Israelite, I mean, the, the, the nation was, my God, and, and, and begin to turn away and worship idols, uh, God still loves us because he understood and understands what he's created. God know that you and I will decide that we want to do it our way and we don't want to read and we don't want to pray, but that does not discourage God because he know what he created. My God, and when the physical part of the man, my God, he has an image of what he wants this clay to become. God already has an image of what he wants you to become. I can't get nobody. Man. That's why you can't let people disqualify you. That's why you can't let your past discredit you, my God. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, really, your past really qualifies you because don't nobody want to listen to somebody who ain't been through nothing. I can't get nobody. All right. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to pick up the story as our point one was uh, the potter and his mission. My God, the physical potter as well as God has a mission. Uh, uh, and you are the mission. I am the mission. Uh, he know what he want us to become. He know what he want us to look like. He also know what it's going to take for us to become what he has called us to do. Are y'all with me so far? And so again, you can go to the YouTube page and you can catch up on point number one. I'm going to jump right to point number two because I'm full. Is anybody full this morning? And I ain't talking about of no, <laughs> come on somebody. Yes, Lord. So point number two, the potter. Let's look at the ministry. Let's look at the ministry. Going to take time to teach. I got my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you to the, the team. Yes, Lord. Let's give, let's give the media team a hand. Yeah, they got my microphone. My God. Yes, Lord. So the potter has a ministry. God has a ministry. You are that ministry. 
Think about the title of the sermon. Let God put his hands on you. God has a perception of what you should become and what he wants you to become. And there's a series of things that God has to do for you to become what he's already envisioned before you was even created in your mother's womb. Please understand and listen very closely, my God, because the things, my God, and the trials and the tribulations and the circumstances and the things that you and I will go through, my God, it's all a part of the plan. Because God already, my God, come on, Pastor, get to your spot down there. God already has an image. God already has a perception. He already know what this physical, this, this temple, meaning you and I, he already know what he want us to become. He already know that he, he has gifted us with gifts, things, and callings, my God. He already know what it's going to take to draw up out of you and I, my God, what it's going to need, my, what we're going to need to be able to do business inside of his kingdom. And so what gets us, my God, is that because we don't know what the income and the outcome going to be when we get there. So there's a whole lot of things that you and I got to go through that God, that God orchestrated, that God will allow. Come on, that's why we're able to say that God will turn, my God, what the enemy meant for bad, God will turn it around for good. God will even, my God, mix as he got his hands on you. He'll mix your mistakes, he'll mix your, he'll mix your failures, my God, all into a pot because, my God, remember that was created destiny, purpose, my God, potential way before he created you. He created you, that, you, he created your purpose and your destiny first and then he went back here and created you, my God, so you can reach your destiny. And so, my God, in order for you and I to reach our destiny, you have to allow, my God, God to put his hands on you. Now, come on, Pastor. Let me do this demonstration one more time. And see, all of us need, my God, God, to put us. See, this is clay. And God is, in order for the clay to become what the potter wanted to be, because he already got a perception, he already got an image, he already know what he wants this clay, lump of clay, to look like. So, he strategically puts his hands at Pacific, at Pacific times, in Pacific places, because he already got an image of what he want the vessel, the clay, to become. So he know when to put his hands, he know when to put this hands and where to put that hand at, he know when to switch and come around and put it here, put it here, put it here, put it here. So you need God to put his hands on you, because watch this now, because he has an image. He already know what he wants your life to become. So he already know when to put this hand, when to remove it, when to put this hand, when to send this trial, when to allow this, when to allow this, when to turn this down, when to put this in, when to allow this to happen, because he already got the image. That's it. And so the potter, when he started, you may be seated, son, when the potter started messing with this vessel, he already had the image. But the, and he controls the wheel. I should have had the woman of God put, the, put the, the wheel, the potter's wheel on the screen, my God. But the potter in the natural controls the wheel. He determines the speed. He determines how fast to go and how slow to go. See, 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 what gets us, my God, because we want to dictate to the potter what's going to happen and what ain't going to happen. We want to tell the potter, my God, I want to do this, but I don't want to do that. I want to go here, but I don't want to go there. See, you get into a problem when you and I start trying to tell the potter how to form the clay. You and I get in a problem when you start trying to tell God what's best for you. You and I get in trouble when you start trying to tell God that you know better. When you start giving God your perception. When you start giving God your opinion. When your will no longer become his will. When he's no longer a priority in your life. See, now we got a problem. Because guess what? My God, when the clay decides that it don't want to be shaped no more, you got a problem. When the clay decides that I don't want your hands on me no more, God, you got a problem. When we get to the point, my God, when we tell God, you don't have a right to touch me. I'm trying to make it personal. You got a problem. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. When you pick and choose when you open up the Constitution, you got a problem. When you pick and choose when you decide to pray, you got a problem. Because remember, my God, everything that God would allow in your life and my life is all part of what he visioned before the foundations of the earth. And so there's lessons, oh my God, there's lessons that you and I got to learn along the way. There's situations, there's circumstances and things that you and I have to experience. It's all a part of the process. It's all a part of your shaping. It's all a part of your molding. You can't get away from it. I don't care how much you fast. I don't care how much you pray. There are certain things that you and I have to experience. Really, we are destined to experience trials and tribulation. Why? The Bible says all those that desire to live godly, they shall suffer a level of persecution. Jesus said they persecuted me, so they're going to persecute you, my God, I just dropped by to tell you, my God, in a few minutes that I have, my God, that this is a suffering way. Uh, yeah. 
This is a suffering way. I'm sorry if you grow up in church and they told you you ain't got to go through nothing. Right. I'm sorry if they told you if you give your life to Christ, my God, the heavens going to always be open. Sometimes God will close the heavens. Then will you still serve him? Will you still love him? Will you still pray? Will you still pray? Come on, somebody. And so I just want you to know that the potter has a plan and he has a purpose for your life. But there's a series of things that he has to do. Remember, he controls the wheel. He determines the speed. He determines everything concerning his vase, concerning this lump of clay. God does, not you and not me. I don't care how much education you got. I don't care what seminary school you went to. I don't care how much money you got. You do not determine, my God, how the pot of Moses shaped your life. Yes. Oh, I'm teaching you right. So up on the point number two, write this down. Let's look at the problem, my God, with this vase. And you got to go look at point number one to understand the full context of the sermon. Even in the potter's hands, church, things can still go terribly wrong. Remember, the potter controls the vessel. He controls the clay, okay? Even in the potter's hands, even in the potter's hands, the natural potter, not the heavenly potter, the natural potter, things can go wrong because he has an image. And so the Bible says, oh my God, when he gets to the end result, he don't like it, he crushes it. Ooh. He, can I tell you that, I told him last week, crushing produces power. Crushing produces power. Mm -hmm. So even in the potter's hand, things can still go terribly wrong. The fault, though, is not with the potter, but it's with the clay. See, see, a lot of us is angry and frustrated even at God right now. You think that God is the problem. Really, you the problem. I'm the problem. Ain't nothing wrong with the Heavenly Father. And then even in the natural, because I want to make sure y'all understand, you got the natural side and you got the spiritual side. So I'm working with both of them. I'm dancing. My God, the natural and spiritual. So truth be told, there could be a problem with the natural man. But I promise you, ain't a, ain't a problem with the, with the heavenly father when it comes to being the potter of your life. He know what he doing. He know when to spin it and when to stop spinning it. He know when to turn it and when not to turn it. He know how long to leave you in the lion's den and when to snatch you out. He know when to drop you in the fire and when to drop you out of the fire. Come on, somebody. See, 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 some of us that should have been liberated right there because there's people right now under the sound of my voice that's upset with God because you felt like God messed up your life. Uh, you said that shouldn't happen. If God is such a good God, why did this happen? Why did it happen? Okay, I understand that. Be careful. Remember, the potter can do what he will with the clay. He know how to mold and shape the clay according to the image that he have for the clay. He understands the destiny that he has for this lump of clay. When it starts out, it starts out a lump of clay, Pastor Tedrick. But God has a destiny, my God. God has a vision of what he wants this clay to become. You and I don't know what the clay is going to become, but God does. So do we think we know better than God? Some of us think we do. Some of us too smart for our own parents, as our mamas and grandmas used to say. Are y'all with me so far? There are times when we even, there are times, even, I mean, when even the best of cur, the vessel still gets out of shape. I want to lay this. Oh, my God. This is the way our lives seem sometimes. We are going along just fine, and we are growing in the grace of the Lord. Then along comes a temptation. Along comes a trial for whatever reason. We are thrown off balance, and we become marred. In the potter's hand. Mm -hmm. Every turn of the wheel makes the blemish more visible. That's why, you, uh, let me make you understand what they're saying. It ain't always popular being out front. Because when you're out front before the people, you're on display. As my spiritual father taught me, my God, anytime you're standing before the people, you're being judged. Right then. Am I going to come back? Or I'm not going to come back. I like him or I don't like him. So it's not always glitz and glamour to be out front. It's not always glitz and glamour, my God, to have a title, to have a position. Because with the title, with the position, come a whole lot of unjust criticism. See what I'm trying to say? People misunderstand people in leadership. Yeah. Now, some people misrepresent the office because they're more in tune with the office than the responsibility of the office. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? So, so, so you got to ask yourself, are you prepared for what you're asking God for? Are you prepared for what you're asking God, for you with me so far. Mm -hmm. so, so, so God knows. It soon become evident that God cannot use us in our present shape. So when God saved you and I, as I taught y'all last week, God had to take you and I through a series of transformation. It's called process. Everybody's in a process. The vessel is going through a process. The clay is going through a process. We are the vessels and the clay is becoming a process. In order for that clay, my God, that lump of clay to become a vessel, it has to go through a process. My God, can I tell you that Pastor Juju just didn't arrive? 
I'm still going through a process. <laughs> oh my God, there's a series of things that had to happen in my life for me to be able to be where I'm at today in my life. And there's a series of things that have to happen and is happening in your life for you to get to where you're at in life. Come on, somebody. And so everybody's going through a process. What hurts us is we, like my God, we abort the process. We want to end up there and we don't want nothing in between that helps us be able to handle and steward this once we get her. See, everything that you and I got to experience, my God, along the way to get her is needed. It's called process. But we want to skip everything and end up here. And then when you get here, you can't handle this. And so then what we become, we become a public success and a private failure because we ain't ready. Sometimes you can want something before you're ready for it. And so the potter knows what he's doing, what to claim. The potter know how to spin and when to spin and how fast to spin. My God, he got his hands on you for a reason. Oh my God, that's why you can't look at another man or woman and gauge yourself and judge yourself by how fast she going or how fast he going. See what I'm saying? God is spinning you and God is spinning me, my God, according to the will that he has for me. He know what I can handle and what I can't handle. He know what you can handle and what you can't handle. That's why it's dangerous, my God, to look at somebody else and try to gauge your life according to them. See, now you're trying to move to their wheel. Now you're trying to move to their speed. And God said, you ain't ready for that. Oh, my God. See, some, and some of us, when you look at another person, my God, you, uh, you really call, as me and my wife were talking last night, you really call a sore. Oh, my God, but you act like a duck. See, if you try to make a duck sore, you're going to frustrate a duck, John Maxwell say. Because a duck is not called a sore. A duck is called a swim. Oh, my God. So you can't make a duck try to fly. I can't get nobody to say nothing. And so some of you, my God, are trying to operate as an eagle, but you really call a swim. Don't get ahead of God is what I'm trying to say. Let God move you according to his speed for your life. He already know the end result. My God, don't mess it up. But even in God's hand, things begin to happen. You know why things begin to happen to the potter? I mean to the clay? Because we begin to don't like, we don't like the process. We, we don't like how long God has taken to bless us. We want to get to the end now. We don't want to wait. Come on. We don't want to go through the more trial. We don't want to go through the more learning experience. We don't want to go through that. We want everything from God now. We don't want to pay a price, oh my God, for nothing. And so we get impatient. And so what we try to do, we try to jump off the wheel. Because we don't like how the potter got his hands on. We don't like the route that he's taking. Are y'all with me so far? So, 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 uh, I want you to understand the problem with the vessel is not with the potter, it's with you and I. Yeah. Don't you know that you and I can get in the way of what the potter's trying to do? Some of us is, y'all know God speak to me. Every time I put my, put your hands on me. This is us. It's God put his hands on me. The pot is trying to mold us. He's trying to shape us. He's trying to get us to that end result, but we steady knocking his hands down. Oh my God, my God. And you complaining about why your life ain't changing because every time he's trying to do something, you steady knocking him down. You steady calling him down. Come on, somebody. Oh my God, God trying to put his hands on you, but you steady knocking him down. And you tell yourself, it's something wrong with God. There's something wrong with the pastor. There's something wrong with the first lady. Now there's something wrong with you because you won't let God put his hands on you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Somebody give God a hand. I'm moving. Okay. I know the pulse of my people, so I'm going to move on to point. No, no, I'm going to move on to uh, uh, B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all got the revelation. Let's look at the perception. Oh, my God. Don't, y'all, don't I tell y'all people are voting on you? People have already formed a perception about you. People have a perception about me. People have a perception about my wife. People have a perception about Pastor Mallon. People have a perception about Mr. Tanya, Pastor Francetta, Pastor Tedrick, my God, Sister Lisa. People already got a perception about you. But thank God that God don't pay attention to the people's perception because he has a perception. Of if God would have paid attention to the people's perception, Barry, ain't nowhere in the world Juju would be doing what Juju is doing because God would have let the people's perception disqualify me. See, some of y'all need to shout right there because God didn't disqualify you because of other people's perception of you. But some of you can't soar. Some of you can't soar so because you're too concerned about other people's perception instead of God's. See, so you got to learn how to get delivered from the opinions of people. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's look at the perception. The, the potter, the natural potter, and as well as the heavenly potter, has a perception because his hands is resting on the vessel. The potter knows instantly when a problem arises. Uh oh. He knows when a problem has arised. He senses the change in the clay and begins to take whatever steps are necessary to correct the problem. The potter senses the change in you and I. God senses the change in you and I. So God immediately begins, because remember, he already got a perception, he already got an image of what he wants this clay to become, and so you have shifted. And so God said, okay, they didn't shift it, so now I gotta shift them back. So then God began to execute. He know what to sin. He know how to make you sit down for a season. Because you done got high and mighty. You done got intoxicated off your own harvest. Uh, 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 he know when to say, okay, she's too cute now. So, uh, and she's dependent on that. And she's dependent on this. He, he too cool now. He can't worship. And you know, when he didn't have nothing, my God, he worshiped God. Now he got so, now he's too cool to worship God. God said, okay, the Bible says that God give it and God take it away. And so the potter would take away what he gave you when you start worshiping it instead of worshiping the creator who gave it to you. Oh, yeah. So, so, so don't you know the blessings of the Lord can move you out of position? I said the blessings of the Lord can move you out of position. It can move you physically out of position and it definitely will move you spiritually out of position because now you worship the creative thing more than the creative other thing. You intoxicated off of what God has done for you and you stop being loyal to him. You stop praying. You stop being committed. You stop fasting, my God. Now you have shifted, my God. So the potter said it is shifted out of position but I'm going to put him back in position where he'll come a trial. he come testing. he come challenges. So some of the stuff we're going through, God never intended for us to go through it. I, I shifting him has caused us to go through trials and tribulation that God never wanted us to go through. Our disobedience or our, our willful sins has caused us to go through unnecessary stuff that the potter never wanted us to go through. All you gotta do is stay on the wheel. All you gotta do is let the potter keep his hands on you and he's gonna protect you from unjust pain. He's gonna, he, he gonna protect you from certain enemies. He's gonna t protect you from certain trials. He's gonna protect you from certain situations because guess what? The potter already has a perception of what he wants the clay to become. So he said, if I let her experience that, if I let him experience that, that's gonna mar the clay. So he gotta protect you. But when you come out and get out of position, now you can't be protected. When you walk from up under his hands, now he can't put his hands on you. Oh my God, come here, Pastor. Come here, Pastor. Come on, come on. Come on, Pastor. Come on. And so when, 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 you, when we first start out to God, we saved, we happy, we excited, we let God do everything. But when God starts blessing, let's step up three steps, huh? Now, stay right there. God can put his, his hands. You got a new car, and you got, you got a piece of a man, and now you got a better job from, from $12. Now you're making 13 Now you add up a. This. See, see, I'm trying to get the image. I want y'all to get the image, get the image, get the image, get the image, get the image. Because God is ultimately trying to bring the nation back from repentance, from worshiping yeah. idols. That's yeah. context, yeah. Pastor. Yeah. See what y'all say? And so, my God, when you and I begin to turn our loyalty away from God, God is trying to bring you and I back yeah. from idol worshiping, back to repentance. Yeah. And he uses his hands to try to bring the nation back. And try to bring the vessel back just to bring some context. But I want you to understand it in our time. Are you with me so far? Give God a hand right quick. Am I helping anybody so far? Okay, okay, okay. okay. And, 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 and so, so, so the God, the potter, and the natural and the spirit is going to take necessary steps. Can I tell you? Uh, it's painful when you fall into the hands. When God, Thank God that he gets to discipline you and I. But the Bible also says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's really an honor that God loves you and I enough that he would keep reaching for us. That he would keep trying to put his hands on us instead of taking us over to Romans and handing us over to a reprobate mind. Come on, somebody. That just hit me right there. Mm. But it's an honor. It's an honor. It's an honor. Oh, my God. At, at, at that time, God is trying to correct the problem. There's problems that you and I have in our vessel, in our attitude, in our heart, in our loyalty. See, I'm trying to make it what we understand today. See, I, see, we got problems that God is trying to correct. So God was sent a man of God. God was sent a word. 
God will use your son. God will use your daughter. God will use somebody that's on the streets. Come on, somebody. Because God is trying to speak to you. He don't care who he used and what he used when he's trying to get your attention. See, I say, quit, my God, telling yourself that if she ain't saved or he ain't saved, if they ain't doing this and they ain't doing that, if they status ain't this and they status ain't that, they can't tell me nothing. Oh, God can use what he want and who he want. My God, when he's trying to correct you, my God, always be open for correction, my God. And I know we don't like it because it's painful. As I teach y'all, truth hurt. My God, truth hurt. When somebody tells you the truth, it's uncomfortable. It hurts, my God. And the first thing we want to do is get offended and take off and run and say, she mishandled me, he mishandled me. But truth hurts, my God. But God is trying to correct a lot of us because a lot of us, God don't have his hands on you. Coming to church don't mean God got his hands on you. Coming to church don't mean that God got his hands on you. Because you got a lot of people that come to church for an hour and a half, and as soon as they leave out the door, they didn't remove themselves from up under his hand. That quick. Because we not, he's not priority. Sometimes we come to church just to scratch it off and say we went to church. Oh, my God. I, I need to use a car on Monday, so I better come to church and sit with her. I said I need to use a car on Monday. Tomorrow, so I need to come to church, so I'm going to come and sit with her. But I ain't got no, I ain't think about no God. I'm going to do my own thing. I ain't worried about no God. I'm just trying to get what I need, manipulating. Be careful. Mm-hmm. I ain't thinking about you. Anytime you, you got to beg somebody to come sit in the house of the Lord with you, that's dangerous. Stay up under the wheel and stay on the potter's wheel. Mm. Never think for a second that you are going to hide something from the Lord. He already has a perception. He sees all. He's aware of every thought, every deed, and every motive. Oh my God, and we allow nothing to pass before him unchallenged. If God knows, my God, when I have a need, then he also knows when sin or some flaw is in my attitude that needs to be corrected. Perception. Perception is very powerful. Perception will work for you or perception will work against you. That's why it's very critical and important, critical, I'm going to use that word, and important to make sure that you formulate the right perception. But you know what gets us flawed? You know what messes us up, woman of God? Because the Bible says that never to judge a thing before it's time. We form perceptions about people. We form perceptions off of lies. As I taught y'all last week, somebody can say something and you take it and cash it and it won't cash, but you, come on. See, see, we form all the wrong perceptions about spirituality, about God. We tell ourselves we ain't got to read. We tell ourselves that's Old Testament, this is New Testament. My God, we, 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 we compromise so much. And most of our compromising comes behind false perception. Can I help you? Because y'all know I love the teacher. A lot of us is in prison, though we physically in society, but we in prison to other people's perception. He has told you you ain't nothing and you ain't gonna never be nothing. And so all of your desire to succeed has been crushed. See, that's good crushing and bad crushing. When you got somebody that's always talking about your faults and always telling you what you can't do, always telling you that you disqualified, come on somebody, oh my God, because some people need you to stay down because it keeps them, because they, they, they have a right to stay down. But if you decide to break camp in advance, now they got to make a decision to go with you or walk away from you. And so you need people. I mean, the, the enemy will use people, my God, to try to beat you down emotionally. To try to always remind you of your failures, your mistakes, and your past. Because if you saw, now they got to make a decision to, be, to go with you or be left behind. But some of us is in prison, even though we're physically free. We're in prison to people's perception of us. Mamas, grandmas, uncles, teachers, former husbands, everything. Perception is dangerous. Many people have formed, in this day and time, the wrong perception about the Bible, uh-huh. about God. Yeah. We tell ourselves that works, that don't work, yeah, that yeah. don't mean that, that mean that. We have come to the wrong perception, which always leads to the wrong conclusion about things in life. I just choose to believe, this is me personally, the Bible tells me that heaven and earth will pass. And the only thing that's going to remain after he burn up everything is this. So I'm going to anchor my mind, I'm going to build my perception, and I'm going to trust my life to the book. Because he says everything that we trust in, everything that we believe in, it's going to burn up. If you ain't trusting and believing in the Constitution, 
you're in trouble. I'm going to say it because I'm willing to go through any persecution. You can email me, you can write me, call me, I don't care. It's Christ on mine, period. And so, my God, I will not be in prison to anyone's perception. Why am I saying that? Because I'm trying to help, I'm trying to allow the Spirit of God through me to liberate some of you. Some of you right now is physically, like I told them Wednesday, you physically free. But in your freedom, you bound up. You out, you're not locked up in prison, but you're locked up in life. You're locked up in your finances. You're locked up in your emotions. You're locked up in your relationships. You're locked up on a job. You hate going to work in the morning. You're in prison, even though you're free. Mm. So the potter, he said, okay, you ready to come back? You didn't out of, get out of position, and now you got your life all out of order, and God loves you enough, so he's trying to bring you back, like he was trying to bring the nation back. He said, he's trying to bring you back, so he can put his hands back on you, so you can get back in the wheel, on the wheel. That's why you got to repent and come to the Lord if you know you're out of the wheel. And if you offer the wheel, out and off of the wheel, you got to come back to the Father so you can get back on the wheel. My God, because he knows what's best for you. My God. Oh, yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. And so think about that. I want you to write this down. Remember the potter uses what we might discord, what we might consider worthless and ugly, useless, unwanted. The potter finds worth. I'm going to read it again. Uh, the potter uses what we might discord, what we consider worthless, what we consider ugly, what we consider useless, what we consider unwanted, the potter finds worth in it. Don't you know, let me make it personal, don't you know that God seen past all of our flaws? He didn't look at what we was doing, Minister Melvin, he looked at what we was going to become. See what I say? That's why you got to thank God for the Lord's Supper. You got to thank God for his grace because the Bible said while you and I was yet in sin, Christ came and died. While you and I wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die. God saw past your mistakes. He saw past my mistakes. He saw past your failures. He saw past my failure. You ought to thank God for that because people have wrote you off. People have already formed a perception about you. But thank God that God ain't controlled by man's perception. My God, who am I talking to in the church? My God. Oh, my God. People has counted you out, but God has counted you in. And what you discord is worthless, God said, that's valuable. It's all in the outlook. What you see is unusable, God see usable. What you see is nothing, God see is valuable. God said you, in his word, are fearfully and wonderfully made. Bible says you and I are joint heirs to the throne. We are precious in God's sight. God loves you, Sharon. God loves you, baby. God loves you. But you got to receive and accept God's love for you. Oh my God, why is it that you can believe other people's words, but you can't believe God's words about you? Why is it that his, my, his words mean more than what the Bible say? He's telling you you're nothing, and God is saying you're something, and you believe him over God. Who are you going to believe, God or man? See, that's what happens when you remove yourself off of the wheel. You can't receive what the potter has for you. You don't understand what the potter's trying to do. Always remember in the context, my God, that God already has a perception of what you and I are supposed to be doing. He already got the end results. He's just trying to get you and I to look like the end result that he already have in his mind. <sighs> Don't make it hard. It's already hard. Are y'all with me so far? <laughs> Write this down. The vessel, my God, when we started this sermon, the vessel was already in God's hand. Before the foundation of the world, you was already in God's hand. Understand this. The vessel is already in God's hand. You are in God's hand. Don't jump out. Write this down. The vessel is also a work in progress. Don't you know that all of us is a work in progress? This vessel that, the God, that God has, this image, this perception of this clay and what he wanted to become, my God, it's a work in progress. But that don't give you and I a license to tell yourself that God know my heart. And you and I continue to do stuff that's unacceptable to the potter. We all are work in progress. But the key word is, my God, you can't be in progress if you're not on the wheel. Yeah. 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 Everybody is a work in progress, but everybody is on the wheel. Write this down. The vessel is remade to please the potter. What God is trying to do in your life and my life is for his glory, not for yours. Everything that God does, he wants the glory. Your mistakes can become glory. Your failures can become glory. Come on, your high times can become glory. Micah, can I tell you that God gets his greatest glory off of watching us, molding us in the valley? 
It's the valley experiences, my God, uh, that empowers you, prepare you for your future. You, you need more. I promise you, if you're really going hard for Christ and you're really being effective for the kingdom, you're going to find yourself more in the valley than you is on the mountaintop. Everybody wants the mountaintop. But God, as I preached before, does his greatest work down here. And it's something that when God done it down here, when you get here, you can scream, you can shout, you can testify about the goodness of the Lord. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. You are deliberated from the perception of people. You are delivered from what people think about you and how they see you. You scream, you shout, you crawl to your healing. Or oh, you dance to your healing. You scream to your healing. You don't cry because you understand the value that God snatched you out of. Oh my God, you are standing. You will give God some glory. Somebody stand up and give God some glory for what you've been through and what you come out of. Mm-hmm. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper. Put C on the screen for me, Mo. Let's look at the patience. Let's look at the patience of the potter. Even though the clay is misshaped and deformed, it. Oh, that hit me right there, Tiki. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, my God, the clay is misshaped and deformed. I don't always pronounce the words right. I can't finish sentences. You talking about me? I talk too fast. I stumble. I walk with a limp. I'm cut all across my face. Bad leg. Scars. A lot of emotional pain. Battles in my mind. Sometimes I'm misunderstood. Sometimes I'm lied on. Sometimes I talked about. Sometimes they don't receive. Misshaped, misunderstood, disregarded. I'm really talking about me, but I'm talking about you too. So, so don't get lost. Don't get lost, my God. And, and, and God is patient with us. <laughs> oh, my God. When we be going, when we allow ourselves to go through, my God, all these different type of uh, mental torment, <laughs> when we start worrying about what people think about us, when we start worrying about how I'm looking and how she think about me and what he think about me and so forth. See, God is patient. He said, okay, okay, told you to get off the wheel, so I'm just going to be patient. Because I already know the end results. She don't know she's going to come back and go hard, but I do. I'll let him run on out there for a season. <laughs> oh, my God, I'll be keep on watching because he got an eagle eye. He sits high and he look low. He know you done ran out there. He know you done went backwards. He know you done slept with him. He know you done done that. He know you done smoked that. He know you done did this. He's just patient. <laughs> He's the pilot. He declared because remember, he know the end result. He already know what you're going to become. He know, my God, when he snatched you up out of there, you're going to go hard for him. You're going to save a lot of soul. You're going to reach those that don't, everybody else couldn't reach. God know what he's doing with you. Quit giving up on yourself. God is a patient God he sees all your deformities he sees all Moses but Lord he, Moses was a Moses was a stutterer but look at the great men of God oh my God look at Moses he came to the church Oh my God! Uh, uh, come on, somebody! Yeah, 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 yeah! Look at, look at, look at, look at Gideon <laughs> was hiding down in the wine press, skiing. My God! Oh, but he became a warrior, and God spoke to his purpose. Come on, somebody! Oh my God! God wasn't worried about Gideon because he was down in the wine press hiding like a little coward. God knew what he was gonna become because he already knew the end results. My God! God knows what you're gonna go through, and God also knows what you're gonna become. That's why you gotta stand up as a man of God, as a woman of God, and you gotta stand up. You've done all to stand. You gotta continue to stand. When you fall down, get back up. When you make a mistake, get back up. Oh, when they say you're a failure, tell them I'm a winner. All of us this God, all of us is marred. Thank God for patience. Oh my God, but don't let the patience run out. Don't let the patience, don't get, don't get caught on the other side of patience. Mm. Misshaped and deformed. But I'm still in his hand and you still in his hand. The, tile, the, the potter takes flawed vessels and presses it back into a lump of clay again. This time the vessel may turn out well, but it may also be deformed once again. So as long as the clay is moldable, moldable and flexible, here's the problem. Don't let life because become Make us become so bitter while heart is not pliable. 
Our heart is our mindset. Don't become so bitter at circumstances and situations that you are experiencing in your life will cause you to not want to read, not want to pray, on, not want to love, not want to forgive, not want to come to church, not want to honor God, not want to walk in your calling, whatever it is, don't become so bitter. Long as you keep yourself pliable, long as, my God, your heart stay tender, God can keep his hands on you. That's it. The danger of becoming so bitter, that's why I thank God what TJ said, don't become bitter, become better. Yeah, Lord. See what I say? If, if you're bitter, if you're bitter this afternoon, you got to let God do something with that. Because God has a will for you. And he has expectations for you. But God, the potter, cannot work his will. He cannot carry out his expectations for you if you keep. And most of us do this because we don't want to submit to the process. And we do this. Because we're scared of our future and we do this because we don't believe that we can. Come on. So we got a lot of reasons why we uh, steady be knocking down like we're knocking flies down, but we're really knocking God down. Many of us is like this in the spiritual realm. God didn't get your dreams and God didn't get your visions. God didn't show this stuff. My God, you're like, I don't want it, God. I'm scared of it, God. I'm not me, God. I ain't qualified. I stutter. I walk with a limp. My God, I got a pass. They're going to laugh at me. They're going to talk about me. They're steady knocking down everything the potter is trying to do to prepare you for the perception of your destiny. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ooh, this is heavy. Yeah. Lord. And that's why the church is stuck. And doing church, and we're not advancing God's kingdom. Because you cannot advance if you're not on the wheel. You can't advance if the potter ain't got his hands on you. You can exist, but you won't advance. Many people in the body is existing, but they're not advancing. They're not developing, they're not growing. And I understand that people grow at different stages and different levels and at different times, but you should always be growing. You should always be advancing. You should always be moving forward. You should always be taking the land. You should always be dominating. You should always be dominating. Sooner or later, you gotta reverse the curse and you need to become dominating it instead of it dominating you. Sooner or later, you gotta grow up, baby. Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Is anybody in this church free? Are you that dominated when you couldn't give God no glory for that? If, my, if you was once defeated and now you got a victory, you should have been shouting and giving God the glory. Mm. I'm sorry, let me bring my passion down and get through with this. Stay moldable. God is patient because he know what to do. He know what to bring some water. The clay ain't got too hard. It's too hard. So here, trials has a way of making you more moldable. Trial has a way of ugh, taking the heart of stone out and putting the heart of flesh back in. Trials will run you right to this altar. Trial will make you come fall in first lady's arms talking about, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Keep, keep getting off the wheel if you want to. Life has a way of pushing you right back to the potter. You trying to get away from the potter. And God going to send a fire and send a trial that's going to push you right back to the pot. Don't run. You can't hide. Where you going to go? What you going to go back to? Don't be like the children of Israel that kept wanting to go back to Egypt. What's in Egypt? Egypt represents the world in our time. Back in the day, it was captivity. Why you want to go back to Egypt? Why you want to get off the wheel and go back to the world? What's different about what drove you to the church? Life out there in the world caused you to make a decision to come to the house of the Lord. And now the God is trying to mold and shape you. He got his hands on you. He allowed things to happen. Situations is taking place. And now you're saying, "Uh, I don't want this. And so you want to go back to the very, watch this, thing that led you to him. Why? Why? I preached a sermon in 2014, I think. It's called the Pool of Egypt. Many of us can't really serve God the level we want to because the pool of the former is more stronger than the pool of God. The pool of the former to go back. We tell ourselves perception that it's, it, it's easier, thank you Dr. Miles Moreau, to exist in chaos than it is to live in freedom. We tell ourselves we had it better in chaos. At least I didn't have to worry about nothing. When I have problems, I can go get high. Uh, uh, when, when, when I have problems, I go find a man or woman to sleep with to try to cover up my problems. See, this is what we tell ourselves. And so we start going right. back. And then, my God, when we realize the Spirit of God convicts us, then we want to run. Uh-huh. 
Back to the church. This is a lot of people right now. In the spirit realm. Right now. And why are you doing that? The part is patiently waiting because he already knew you was going to do it anyway. That's why I'm going with that. See, y'all missed the tears and shout. He knew you was going to go back and forth like this anyway. And he's patiently waiting. Because one of the times you're going to come over here and like me, that ain't going to be more attractive to you than this over here. That over there ain't going to be more attractive than this over here. It's good on this side. Is anybody... Watch this. God is so patient. I'm going to bring you on in. When the vessel is marred, you and I, the potter does not throw the clay away and start with a fresh new piece. Ooh. He ain't going to throw you away, Pastor. Boy, that hit me in my soul. Thank you, Lord. Why did it hit me then, God, like it did just now? Ah, help me, God. Ooh. I thank God. Ooh, help me, Lord. 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 Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Ah, God. Oh, my God. Will not throw you away and then get another lump of clay. He won't throw you away. He didn't allow you to throw me away. See, 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 some of this stuff is. Oh. God is so patient with you and I because he know the end result, Minister Tanya. And so instead of him getting frustrated with you and frustrated with me, he ain't going to say, I ain't going to use that piece of clay, that lump of clay. I get another lump of clay. That's why you better thank God. Barry, look at me, Barry. He could have left you on your mama's couch, flat broke, and decided to bless him and make him a millionaire. He could have left you in your drug addiction and said, I'm going to use her. He could have left you in the hospital and healed you. You don't have to be a football star. It could be him. You don't have to be all on TV like you are, Savy. This is God. You don't have to be all on the newspapers. You don't have to be getting ready. All of the colors are recruiting you. You're going down for this and this and that. It could be anybody but you. Oh my God, my God, my God. Always stay thankful. Always stay, Lord, I love you. Thank you. Because it could be anybody but you. It don't have to be you, Savior. It could be anybody other than you. That's why you got to thank God he didn't throw you away. You better thank God, Cornell, he let you die. You better thank God he didn't throw you away. Who am I talking to in the church? I thank God he didn't throw me away and get somebody else. Some of you men, your wife took you back. I thank God she didn't go get somebody else. She stayed down with me. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That hit me right there. Oh my God, when I put this sermon together, it hit me like that. Oh, but he didn't throw me away. He, he didn't throw you away. I said, he didn't throw me away. He didn't throw you away. You ought to be giving God some glory that he didn't throw you away. My God. Oh, he could have left me. Hey! Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. That's the spirit of the living God. Melvin, think about it, Melvin. Ooh, Jesus. Shemaine, think about it, Shemaine. Oh, my God, think about it, y'all. He could have used anybody. He could have put you to the side and never picked you back up. He could have let you die in your scene and never gave you a chance to know him as your personal Lord and Savior. It could have been anybody. He didn't have to use you. He don't have to use me. He can use anybody to preach and pastor going over to his church. It's an honor. God can use who he wants and when he wants. You better learn how to humble yourself. A good thing it's all about you. I'm sorry. 
Let me go ahead and bring this thing on in. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There are times, though, there are times when the potter, meaning the Lord, will remove his hands of blessings. There are times when the potter, thank you, Lord, anytime the potter, get this image, take his hands up off of you, as I told y'all, we're in a dangerous place. Anytime the spirit nudging, the reminders of the spirit, anytime people that you know and respect, they voice and what they saying don't even matter. Anytime your heart and my heart has gotten so hard, where you harden so hard, where nothing can penetrate you, God for a season will set you to the side. Because remember, staying in context from a point, he already knows this result. But see, people will take what the Spirit of God just said and know that I'm going to end up here anyway, and so you decide that you're going to live any kind of way. In context with the scripture, God was calling the nation to repentance. If you repent, I will do to you what I'm doing to this potter. I will crush and destroy and put it back together. If you and I repent, submit, and turn from, God will restore these broken vessels, this marred clay. But if you and I choose to do it our way and think that we have already heard, job well done, my good and faithful servant, if you already think that you, you got this thing figured out, you are all so righteous and you are all so holy, my God, then you know you're going to hear job well done. The devil is a lie. Amen. That's why the Bible said we are working out our soul salvation. I don't think that you can just live any kind of way because you accepted Christ. Because if you really accept Christ, it's going to produce a transformation eventually in your life. You're going to love what God loves and you would hate what God hates. You can't tell me you say, but you don't care nothing about reading. You don't care nothing about praying. You don't want to forgive. You don't want to love. I, I question are you really saved. Because when you really get born again, you have an appetite for the things of God. That don't mean you immediately be going hard like I go hard, but you have an appetite. Eventually, in four months, they will see some type of change. Some type of change in your life, my God, if you have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It's hard to stay the same when you're reading every day. It's hard to stay the same when you're praying every day. It's hard to stay the same when you're loving and falling in love with Jesus. You can't stay the same if you have the time with Jesus. Oh, my God. Only reason why we won't change is because our heart then got too hard. But God is patient. I'm going to give y'all number three and we're going to finish. But the potter has a message. Ooh, Lord, you are that message. I am that message. He turned your mess, Jamie, on, into a message. <laughs> Pastor Tedger, he turned your mess, champ, my God. Ah. I thank God, Shemaine, that you are a message. Everything, Nichelle, Lorraine, Chef, and Peoples, from the time you was born to now, even the things you have experienced, my God, with your husband as a pastor, is all working together for the good. I decree it, and I know it. That's why you ain't got off the wheel. <laughs> Oh my God, because you got a purpose to be connected to this wheel. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Well, most people would have left and got up off the wheel. You stayed on the wheel. You're holding on if you got to hold on. Oh my God, with just a pinky, yet you're holding on. Hey, my God, but everybody, it's my God, mess can become a message. In order for it to become a message, you got to stay on the wheel. Yeah, that's it. Transfer. Transfer. Message 
Everything is a message. Your life is a message. Your life is a message. Your life is a message. I'm speaking to your purpose and your destiny. Your life, Yolanda, is a message. Q, Antoinette, Patrice, Naila, Bashanda, your life is a message. It only can become a message when you're on the wheel. When you get off the wheel, your life is a mess. As I bring it in, look at your neighbor and say you're a message. Nyla, come around here and look at your mama and tell her she's a message. Look at your neighbor, y'all, and tell her she's a message. And tell him he's a message. Mother-in-law, I'm looking at you. You're a message. Remember what the Spirit of God just said. If you're not on the wheel, you are a mess. The key is to get back on the wheel so your mess can become a message. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you this and I'm going to let you go. According to verse 6 of the scripture, the potter has absolute control mm, over what becomes of the clay. In his hand, he makes it what he desires. He is in control of our lives. And he makes us what he wishes. I promise you, your life would have more substance and more meaning if you understand that God is in absolute control. And he is going to make you what he wants you to become. Not what you want to become. God has given you dreams and God has given you visions, but God gave it to you. So let God help you fulfill the dream that he gave you. Let God help you to become that which you aspire to become. Because guess what? You didn't get it. He gave it to you. Are you with me so far? So God, my God, will do what he wants to do with your life. And the quicker you and I submit, he wouldn't have never asked you to do it if he didn't think that you could do it. Everything that you need to fulfill that what he has called you to do. It's on the inside of you, and that what is not already planted on the inside of you, he's going to send to you. God will be an unjust God if he asks you to do anything in the world and don't equip and qualify you to do it. That's not the God that I serve. So a lot of us need to quit being so fearful of your future. Too many of us is fearful of our future. We have been in chaos so long, we scared to embrace the next. We don't know what it's like to live in freedom, but we shout and jump about chaos. We comfortable with being in chaos, but God has a future. God has a message. God has a plan. God has a vision. God has a purpose. You have potential. That's why you and I did not die in your sin. That's why you and I didn't die when we was in the world. As I close, because God has a purpose for you. If you were supposed to die, you would have died. If you were supposed to drink yourself to death, you would have drunk yourself to death. When they shot me up, if I was supposed to die from gunshot, being gunned down, I would have died. Oh my God, when you ran through that, uh, that, that, that barricade, my God, over 100 miles an hour, when your car jumped up and leaped up in the earth, when you came down, the car could have exploded and you could have been in all pieces. But God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. God know what he's doing. I'm going to close it. God then spoke. He didn't spoke. Each person who dares 
to embrace their future is also called to endure a season of trial and tribulation. If you aspire, if you dare to embrace your future, and I quote Dexter T.D. Jakes, if you aspire to embrace your future, welcome to a season of trial, tribulation, and pain. But the end result is destiny. Amen. Somebody call it. Somebody call it. Question in closing. Could the worst moments of your life actually become the turning points? of your triumph for God. The worst moments can be a turning point. Oh my God, the worst, see that right there speak to me. My, I'm gonna leave it alone, I'm gonna leave it alone, I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, some of the hardest times when they said 13 years of Department of Correction was a turning point. Think about your turning point. Did you mishandle something that was supposed to turn you to God? You didn't let it turn you away from God. Something that the potter was trying to use to turn you, to turn on the light bulb, to take the stone out. He was trying to reveal something. Don't do it, son. Don't do it, daughter. Go another way. Listen to your mama. Listen to your daddy. Listen to what pastor's saying. Listen to your accountability partner. It's something that was supposed to turn you to God. You mismanage it because of the wrong perception and it turned you away from God. When you should be in triumph, now you're in misery. You should be in triumph because you missed an opportunity to turn. When the potter was trying to turn you, remember, when you get marred, when you get scarred, the potter know when to send his trial. Was something that God sent to turn you and you turned the opposite direction? And now you are not in triumph, but you're in misery? That's why Paul said, examine yourself. Take a look at yourself. Don't let hype, don't let emotionalism, don't let excitement, don't let worldly riches, my God, my God, my God, uh, uh, deceive you and I to think that all is well when you're missing strategic turning points that leads to victory, that leads to deliverance. Because when you turn and when you're in position, the people that you are supposed to impact, the people that you are supposed to meet, the people that you are supposed to affect will be there. Some of us is hanging out with people that we ain't supposed to be hanging out with in this season. You way over to the left when you should be to the right. You didn't miss the season. You didn't miss the turning point. <clears throat> God uses life's deepest Heartaches and most devastating disappointments for your glory and his glory. Life, most devastating situations, opportunities, trials. Some of the greatest messages that I ever preached came out of my most greatest pain. The level of triumph and victory that God's allowed me to walk in, but I had to walk out of a whole lot of pain. That's why the psalmist said it was good for me that I was afflicted. If you are a vessel that is refusing to yield, in your life, there is no better time than the present to take care of that need. Will you come to Jesus today and place yourself mm -hmm, into the miracle working hands of the heavenly potter? Will you allow him, talking about the heavenly potter, to work his will in your life so you can become that vessel of honor for the glory of the Lord. With every head bowed. 
every head bow. If you have never accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and God has spoken, and you want to get on that wheel, and you want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you want to hear job well done, and you are ready to come to the Father so he can put his hands on you, and you're ready to know that you have a place called eternity that can never be taken from you as long as you stay on the wheel. If that's you, please raise your hand. Please. Is it anybody? Thank you for that hand. Is it anybody? Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. Oh my God. Thank you for that hand. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for that hand. My God. Thank you, Lord. Oh my God. Anybody else? Anybody else? You're not alone. You want to know before I have y'all come, you want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, oh my God, that you got an opportunity, my God, to stand before God and her job well done, my good and faithful servant. You're ready to give your life to the potter. You're ready to give your life to the potter and the wheel. Is anybody else other than those that has already raised their hand? Is that you? Please don't allow the enemy, whatever that enemy could be, rob you an opportunity to come to the Father so he can put his hands on you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask each one of you that has raised your hands to please come stand right in front of the communion table. Come. From all over the sanctuary, come. All those that raised your hand on that first call, come. My God. Mm. Come. Yes, Lord. Is it anyone else? Because I know they're not alone. Thank you, Will. Where to bring it? Who do you need to bring to Christ this afternoon? Is there someone beside you that you invited to church and you know she or he ain't on the wheel? Be bold enough to bring them. Some people you have to bring to Christ. Is that anyone else? Who is sitting beside you dying and you say that's my friend but do you love him enough or her enough to bring them to Jesus? You know they want to come. They just told you last night that I need to get my life together and now they're sitting in the house of the Lord. Will you bring them to Jesus? Or will you let them die and they vomit? They coming. Thank you, Lord. 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 Now, if you are here. And you have already given your life to Christ. But you have allowed life. Things that you didn't understand. Frustration, anger, whatever it may be. My God, bitterness. My God, hardness of heart. My God, to cause you to get off of the potter's wheel. And you know you're going to church, but you're not on his wheel. Come. Thank you. Thank you. For those of us who has come to Christ for the first time. For those of us who are wanted away and want to recommit our life to Christ. For those of us who have come and ready for life never be the same as it has been. Will you repeat after me? Lord, I submit my life, my heart, my soul, and my everything to you. Lord, I'm asking, I beseech you that you forgive me of all of my sins. The things that I know of, the things that I'm aware of, and also the things that I'm unaware of, the things that I don't know of. Lord, I thank you on this day that I am 
getting on the potter's wheel. Lord, I thank you on this day that my heart is turned to you. Lord, I thank you on this day that my heart is all for you. Lord, I thank you on this day that my heart is broken before you. Now, God, I just thank you for your never ending touch. Lord, I thank you that I would never be the same because I have made up in my mind, I have made up in my heart that I will serve you with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my strength. Lord, this is my life, and I put it in your hands. If you agree with that prayer, will you lift up your voice and say amen? Amen. In a thousand amen.